Hello, in this video I'd like to talk about a scrambled slide rule. So the idea is that we want to take a standard slide rule and we want to scramble the numbers around so that it still works as a slide rule. Uh, so normally what you would do is you would take a ruler and at ln of two units down the ruler, you would write the number two. And then at ln of three units down the ruler, you would write the number three. At ln of four units down the ruler, you would write the number four, and so on and so forth. And because of the property that the ln of a plus the ln of b is equal to the ln of a times b, um, this ruler allows you to calculate products. So um, let's say that instead of writing the number two here at ln of two units down the ruler, uh, we instead wrote the number five. Scramble things up a little bit. So what does that mean? Well, in order for this to still work as a slide rule, it has to be the case that when we line this ruler up with itself, and I guess you could also design slide rules where the two rulers have different um, scales on them, but let's say we just want one ruler, one scale lining up uh, against itself. So when we line the ruler up against itself, it has to be the case that um, lining up with the five that we've written, ln of two units down on this ruler, is up on this ruler five times five. So here, Two, so here, two ln two units down our original ruler, we need to write five times five, or 25. Two ln of two being, of course, the same thing as ln of four. And similarly, if we're going to write a 25 here, we also have to write a 25 on the other slide rule as well. And that means that this 25 has to line up with five times 25 on the original ruler, that is 125. So three ln of two units down the original ruler, we need to write the number 125 and so on and so forth. Uh, every multiple of ln of two, we have already determined what number we want to write at that multiple of ln of two. Uh, and this actually works in reverse. Uh, once we know that we want to write five at this particular point here, it actually determines what we want to write halfway between the start of the ruler and that point there. So let me erase this and zoom in a little bit. So halfway between the start of the ruler and ln of two units down the ruler, we need to write some number a. And it needs to be the case that that number a, when we copy it down here, it needs to be the case that a times a is equal to five. Now we have two choices here. We could uh, write uh, the negative square root of five here at this point, um, but that's going to make things super awkward. We're very quickly going to have to start introducing complex numbers to our slide rule. It's just gonna get gross. Um, you could do it, but I don't recommend it. Instead, let's pick the positive square root of five uh, to write here. And by a similar argument, once we've determined what number we want to write here, half of uh, ln2 units down the slide rule, uh, that also determines what number we write two times one half ln of two units down the slide rule. Uh, specifically, it has to be the square root of five squared, which fortunately we've already written that there. Um, but 
three times one half ln of two units down the slide rule, we now have to write uh, the square root of five to the third. And so on and so forth. Once we've determined that there's a square root of five here at one half ln of two, all multiples of that uh, are also determined what we need to write there on the slide rule. And you can actually carry out a similar argument to what we've shown here to not only show that at one half ln of two units, we need to write five to the power of one half, but also at one third ln of two units down the slide rule, we have to write five to the power of one third or the cube root of five. Uh, and uh, similarly, any one over n, we need to write uh, five to the power of one over n at one over n ln of two units down the slide rule in order to get everything to work out properly. And at all multiples of those one over n's, that is m over n times ln of two units down the slide rule, we have to write five to the power of m over n. So what this means is that for any rational multiple of ln of two, we have determined exactly what number we want to write on our scrambled slide rule in order to make it work like a slide rule. But that's it. Fortunately, um, there are plenty of extra points on the slide rule that we can determine what values uh, to write there, uh, uh, just as long as they're not rational multiples of uh, the ln of two. And there are plenty of numbers which aren't rational multiples of the ln of two. For instance, uh, ln of three. So at ln of two units down the slide rule, we decided to write the number five. And we're actually perfectly free to write whatever number we want at ln of three, because it hasn't been determined yet. Uh, and when I say any number, I mean any number. You could write, you could write five here if you wanted. You could write, I don't know, three or two or negative one or six. Um, you can pick whatever number you want. You could write pi here. That's perfectly fine. You can write whatever number you want here. Uh, and we're just going to have to fill in the rest of the slide rule uh, in accordance with the rules of what it means to be a slide rule. Uh, so let's actually choose a number that's going to make things very scrambled. I'm going to choose to write a two here at ln of three units down the slide rule. And of course, if this is going to be a slide rule, it needs to be the case that when we line this up with itself, When we line this ruler up with itself, the five down here has to line up with, we've already decided that that has to line up with 25 up here. And this uh, two down here has to line up with five times two or 10. And we're going to have to write that at ln of two plus ln of three units down the slide rule. That is to say ln of six. and so on and so forth. We can carry this process out filling in the slide rule. We know um, that, uh, so first of all, we should go through and fill in all of the rational multiples of ln of three with the appropriate powers of two, right? So we should fill in at, if we instead lined, this slide rule up with itself lined up at the two. We know here uh, two ln of three or ln of nine units down the original slide rule. We have to line that up with two times two, which is four. Uh, and uh, so we need to, we've determined what numbers we want to write at all of the multiples 
of ln of 3, and all of the multiples of ln of 2, all of the rational multiples, and we've actually determined what we want to write at all of the sums of those as well. And so any number that could be written in the form p times ln of 2 plus q times ln of 3, we've determined what number we want to write at that particular position on the slide rule. In particular, this is just going to be Oops. 5 to the p times 3 to the q. Uh, and this works for any rational numbers p and q. Uh, but of course, there are still lots of points left that we haven't filled in on the original number line, right? This only fills in countably many points on the number line, and so we can keep filling them in. Uh, all we need to do is find some number that can't be written as a rational combination of ln of 2 and ln of 3. Uh, unfortunately, ln of 4 is not a good candidate for this, uh, nor is ln of 6. Um, ln of 4 is just 2 times ln of 2, and ln of 6 is ln of 2 plus ln of 3, but ln of 5 does work. And so we can pick at ln of 5, which is going to be somewhere here between uh, 2 ln of 2, that is ln of 4, and ln of 6. Somewhere in between here, uh, we have ln of 5, and we can put whatever number we want there. Um, and then at numbers of the form, p times ln of 2 plus q times ln of 3 plus r times ln of 5, where p, q, and r are rational numbers, we should write uh, 5 to the p times 3 to the q times, uh, let's say we decided to write pi at, um, at uh, ln of 5, then it would be times pi to the r. Uh, and this is, this is perfectly fine. Uh, and there's still a whole bunch more points left over on our number line. Again, this is only countably many points. Um, and so by taking, so specifically you want to focus on the natural logs of prime numbers, and this is going to give us a uh, uh, countable, it's only countable, so there's still going to be plenty of stuff left over on the number line. It's going to give us a countable uh, collection of, um, of points, um, and it, it's just going to let us you know, fill in a whole bunch of, of stuff on our number line. Essentially what we're doing Another way to write this combination here is just as ln of 2 to the p times 3 to the q times 5 to the r. Um, we're just taking our position on the number line as a rational number. Uh, we're using unique factorization, which also works for rational numbers. So p, q, and r can be uh, integers, right? They can be negative um, when we're uh, coming up with a unique prime factorization of any rational number. Uh, and at this particular location on the number line, uh, we want to write, uh, we want to, well, we just take the 2 and replace it by a 5, and we take the 3 and replace it by a, oh, no, whoops. <laughs> we decided to replace our 3s by 2s. Uh, and then our um, 5, and we replace it by a pi, and there we go. We, we now have the number that we've written at that particular position on the number line. Um, of course, you might ask a few questions like, uh, hold on, uh, <laughs> this doesn't seem very useful. Uh, so uh, one of the things that's really helpful about actual real-world slide rules is that um, they're continuous, they're monotonic. Um, uh, if you uh, are really close to a particular tick mark on uh, a traditional slide rule, uh, then you know that the value that you actually are at is very close to the value on the tick mark. Um, that's not true for this uh, slide rule. Uh, this slide rule, if you move the tiniest bit over, now of course I can't draw in all of the numbers that we've written, but once you decide, uh, even once we decided what uh, to write at ln of 2, um, uh, you know, we should 
technically densely fill in this number line here. Uh, and the issue is that if you move just a little bit on this number line, the number that you're going to write on the number line is going to change radically. Uh, and of course, you don't want that in a, a practical slide rule. And one of the things that you can do is you can show uh, that if you have uh, a um, if you have a slide rule and require it to be monotonic, that is, that the numbers go in the right order, uh, then um, uh, then it, it has to necessarily be a traditional slide rule. I'll give you a moment to think about that, and then I'll show you why uh, that is true. So let's suppose that we want to have a monotonic slide rule. That is, the numbers are all in increasing order. Uh, well, uh, let's say that we pick a number to put at position ln of 2 down the slide rule. And let's say without loss of generality that the number that we decide to put there is 2. Um, of course, uh, provided that we put 2 anywhere on the slide rule, uh, we can always just pick a location that we decided to write the number 2 at on the slide rule and just call that distance ln of 2 units down the slide rule. So this is, this is genuinely without loss of generality. Uh, and of course, once we decide what to write uh, ln of 2 units down the slide rule, that also determines what we have to write 2 ln of 2 units down the slide rule, 3 ln of 2, two 3 ln of 2 units down the slide rule, 4 ln of 2 units down the slide rule, 5 ln of 2 units down the slide rule, and so on and so forth, uh, corresponding to the natural logs of various powers of 2. Uh, and so uh, let's say that now we are in the process of trying to decide what number we can write, what numbers can we write ln of 3 units down the slide rule. So let me sketch those in for you. So ln of 3 is somewhere around here. So that 2 ln of 3, or ln of 9, winds up just a little bit after uh, ln of 8. And 3 ln of 3 is going to wind up just a little bit before 32. And let's say that ln of 3 units down the slide rule, we write, we write the number a. Then here, at ln of 9 units down the slide rule, we have to write the number a squared. And a cubed at 3 ln of 3 units down the slide rule, or ln of 27 units down the slide rule. Now, notice what we have here. This number here, a cubed, has to be somewhere between 16 and 32, right? Um, and if we solve this equation by taking the cube root of all three sides of it, uh, we wind up getting that roughly, these decimals go on forever, a has to be somewhere between 2.52 and 3.17. Uh, and so really, <laughs> there aren't many good options in here. Although admittedly, pi is in here. Maybe we could write pi there. Uh, and well, disappointingly, no, we can't write pi here. We really do have to write a three. And the reason why is because if you carry this argument out much further, Right, um, you wind up getting, and this is this is a true fact that you can just put into a calculator. One hundred times ln of three is somewhere between one hundred and fifty-eight times ln of two and one hundred and fifty-nine times ln of two. And what this really is an expression of is the fact that three to the power of a hundred is somewhere between. 2 to the power of 159 and 2 to the power of 158. So this is this is really some sort of number theoretic fact uh, that's going on here. Uh, and uh, what we can do is we can, um, well, uh, what this means is that whatever number a we decide to write ln of 3 units down on the on the number line, it has to be the case in order for everything to be in the right order, 
So here, at 100 ln of 3 units down the number line, we're going to write a to the power of 100. Uh, here, we're going to write 2 to the power of 159. And here, we're going to write 2 to the power of 158. And hopefully you can see where this is going. If we take the hundredth root of all three sides of this inequality, uh, we wind up getting that a, the number that we have to write at ln of three units down the slide rule, has to be somewhere between two to the power of 1.58 and two to the power of 1.59. Uh, put these into a calculator and you wind up getting Well, these are much tighter bounds than we had um, than we had before, uh, and I mean, there's really only one choice for a in this range. And if you pick something else, uh, we can just go further down the number line and narrow in these bounds a little bit closer and show you that actually your original choice for a was a was a bad choice. You really need to pick uh, putting. 3 uh, at ln of 3 units down the number line, again, provided that, that we started off by putting a 2 ln of 2 units down the number line, which we said was without loss of gen generality. So really, if you want a monotonic or a continuous um, uh, uh, slide rule, uh, and, and these are actually the same, you can show that if the function from positions to, uh, uh, to numbers is continuous, then uh, then it, it uh, has to be uh, a standard slide rule. Um, uh, if you have a non-standard slide rule, very interesting thing happens where if you zoom in on a tiny little piece, um, you get numbers that are arbitrarily big and arbitrarily small uh, on that tiny little piece. Uh, if, uh, if this only works if you have a non-standard slide rule. Uh, and you can use that to argue that, that the only continuous slide rule is a standard slide rule. Um, uh, but uh, this is kind of a fun thing to think about, is uh, to think about what sorts of properties do non-standard slide rules have, what sorts of properties do standard slide rules have, um, uh, as, as opposed to non-standard slide rules. Um, it's a really fun thing to think about, uh, and uh, I hope I have encouraged you to do so. Uh, I will see you in a future video.